Back here in Park City, Utah, women's bobsled first heat down. Now time to concentrate on the men. Their first race of the weekend, two-man competition here at Utah Olympic Park. A very cold day has turned into a cold, snowy day as we get set for run number one just moments away. Hello once again, everyone. I'm Tim Singer, pleased to be rejoined by longtime bobsled commentator and FIBT representative, John F. Morgan. John, it was a lot clearer yesterday when they took this sled down the track. Yeah, look at this GoPro on the top of a helmet. Real smooth. Curve one, two. You gotta be real quiet up here in this track up at the start, because any mistake will cost you a lot of time. Now, Sunny, it's like falling out of a five-story building. And now you start to accelerate big G-forces here in this curve. Snowy now into a three-corner combination called the Labyrinth. Every track's got to have one. And now in what they call Albert's Alley after Prince Albert of Monaco. Now this Wasatch. Big pressure speeds near 80 miles an hour. Bottom part of the track crashes here in 14 sometimes. Olympic curve buries you into the bottom part of the track if you're a brakeman. My favorite part of the track, the graveyard of time. You're going uphill at the finish. It's a very short track to get down. It's a very easy track to get down, but it's tough and to a, get down fast. And a very long-standing track record set during the 2002 Olympic Winter Games. That's like Sammy Sosa and Mark yeah, McGuire. Yeah, Mark McGuire back in 98. The Long and Zimmerman thing. What are you implying? These are the World Cup standings up to the moment after race number one. Holcomb defeated Hefty and Spring. Those were the medalists. Zubkoff lurking in fourth place. And these guys are the ones you figure will do well all season long. Look out for the Germans sitting in 11 and 12th position. Will they be making a move here or will they be suffering the same fate that the women seem to be doing in the early going? Light snowfall here. Yeah, this is going to play a little havoc. Steve Holcomb gets to go off first. That, that's in the four-man competition tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. yeah, he won't be going off first. In fact, of that's the, right. that ninth, top seed, he's the ninth. Be almost the worst possible position you can have. Snow, I bet you they cancel our commercial breaks that we have here in the program and you say start that, list. You say that with great cheer. That way we can go wall to wall. There's, there is the start list or the total of 25 sleds. That's one more than we had last week in Calgary. Chris Spring and Jesse Lumpston off to a great start. They took bronze last week in the World Cup opener, and we're expecting big things from the emerging pilot and the very, very strong push athletes. See that Korean sled in there, Juan Seo. They were not there last week, but they were down here in the America's Cup. They've acquired enough points so that they're in the second seed to go into the second draw, acquire those points in the World Cup circuit. And the snow is starting to really come down, and what an advantage it is for the first sled down, or if there's enough snow on the track, he's a snow plow. That's right. So first heat, during the heat, we'll be reading your tweets if you have questions and comments. Bob Skelly TV, at Bob Skelly TV, our Twitter number, our handle, and email us at bobskellytv at gmail.com. Sit back, still three more heats of racing today. The first heat of the two-man competition followed by the second run of women and men. First, first up, John, excuse me, from Russia. Alexander Kazyanov and his big veteran brakeman, Alexei Voyevoda. Look at the size of Voyevoda. I have never had anybody shake my hand like his. The only other person I've seen with that big a hand was Merlin Olson. And Merlin was a pretty big boy. Voda, the arm wrestling champion of Russia. Look at the size of his shoulders. He really has a challenge of getting in the back of these sleds into an aerodynamic pose because he is so thick. Kasanov really uses the two mans to warm up the four mans. Metal a couple times, at least, if not three, four man competition, including in Whistler. I think he won in Whistler there last year. But he's coming on every year, getting a little closer. Lives in the shadow of Zukov. Zukov. Only three nations in men's bobsled will field three sleds at the Olympic Games. We got to believe Russia's in a battle with Canada, the United States, to be one of those nations. Germany, despite the, the rough start, 
probably will qualify the three. That's Pierre Luders, two-time Olympic medalist, now coaching the Russian squad. 48.07, that's only 6,300 or 6,100 off the track record. So we're gonna get down into the low 40, and probably high, I would say 47, 75, the best slides will have. Look at Vavoda, get in, get down. You're gonna see his shoulders all the way down. Watch him all the way here. You'll be able to see those shoulders popping up. He's late there on that curve. Airborne runners into the graveyard. There's a guy you don't want to meet in the alley. Unless he's on your side. Well, this is a pilot who had a disappointing first weekend, but we expect nothing but good things to continue down the road for Oscars Melbardis, 25-year-old Latvian, won the four-man competition last year at the World Cup in Sochi. Both of these guys are about, the driver's 240, the brakeman's about 250. They run like NFL linebackers. Dominic Leiskins, the brakeman, a longtime successful brakeman for Giannis Minnitz. In the United States, the biggest, fastest athletic men are playing in the NFL. In Latvia, the biggest and fastest athletic men bobsledding for Latvia. No question, uh, except for skeleton, and, except for ice hockey, bobsled and skeleton are among the most popular sports in that nation. Big ratings for bobsled and skeleton in that country. Kasanoff had a great run, 700s down at the start, and I don't know if Mel Bartis is gonna beat him. Not to good speed, and he, he does. does. He extends it actually at by the bottom, he did. That's Look. Sandus Prusis, one of the long, long list of great pilots out of Latvia. Started with the Soviet Union. That's right. Ball came down, he came out, he won, almost won a World Cup title, I think, in the 92-93 era. And won the inaugural Goodwill Good Games, Games in Lake Placid, 2000. Big men. Look at, no, look at the break man. Driskins, he's, wow. You, the size of these athletes, getting in, get down in that little bathtub. And look how, look where he, how small he makes himself on the back. You can see some shoulders bouncing around there, but. One Russian's made their way down, another about to go. It's been a big day already here in Park City for Russia. Alexander Trechikov won the men's skeleton competition. And here is the veteran bobsled pilot, a former World Cup four-man champion, an Olympic medalist in both four-man and two-man. Got to figure it's the last season for the 39-year-old from Siberia, Alexander Zubkov. If he wins the gold medal at this year's Olympic Games, He'll be in the sports ministry the rest of his life. If, if he not, doesn't, he, back he might be over, back might be over on the opposite coast. Dmitry Trunyankov pushes them to a 497 third best of the three. Sledge rattling a little bit. A little bit of uh, negotiation by Zubkov into that curve four. Plus 11, surprising. But the sled looked really good last week in Calgary, John, both two-man and four-man, top four finishes. He was both. really flying on the bottom part of the track, and he's going to need to do it here. But the difference here, Calgary's 1,400 meters. This is like 1,300 meters. Here it is, plus 12, plus 10. Watch the line in the graveyard. Watch the speed. 134, 134.7. This is a good speed. Going to be single digits. That translates to 83.7 miles an hour, just five hundredths of a second out of the lead set just moments ago. But Kasanov, his, his, his uh, teammate, first man down the track, beat Zukov. I got to believe the first man down the track had a big advantage. The snowfall is going to continue, and that is going to be a positive for these sleds that have already come down. And a negative down. for Lyndon Rush and Steve Holcomb. Ninth and tenth. Doesn't have a clean exit here. Look at his eyes, barely above the cowling. Big man sitting in there. Look at him play with the runners, try and stay off that wall. Little hit, but he's hit it on the right-hand side, the take on, where he still got on where he wanted to get on that curve. Nick Cunningham, one of three USA pilots last week in the top 10, albeit in 10th place, out of Monterey, California. His brake man from just outside of Lexington, Kentucky is Dallas Robinson. Six foot four. 226 to be exact. Sprinter, it's Dallas Robinson. 2008, I think it was, in the 60-meter indoor 
collegiate ranks was one of the top sprinters. At a six, six sixty four is his PR at the sixty meters. Great athlete. That'll get you to the NFL compound. Cunningham, the athlete out of Boise State, likes to do a little rodeo too. Hasn't had a very good opening of the season. Here he is losing some time. But still a hundredth up after that start time of 486. That was the key. The driving is the second. Oh, he's pulling away now, too. This is a home track advantage if you stay straight here. Speed, 134.6. This is good enough to get him into the leader's box. Nick Cunningham in the United States by 12 hundredths of a second opens up the lead. And Brian Scheimer, the head coach, coach, not only pleased, but maybe a little surprised, John. I think I'm surprised. I think Nick's going to be surprised. I think Dallas is going to be surprised because this is what you expected out of him last weekend. Justin Olson, gold medalist from the 2010 night train team. Look at these lines. Can you see the six foot four Robinson back there? Barely. Little drift, but he's trying to get over to the right side of the curve. He wants to get on the take on, on the, on the early on that curve. Way to go. Way to go, guys. It's been a huge day for the United States and Canada so far in the skeleton and women's bobsled races. Not so for Germany. Let's see what the young future star of this German program can do. Pilot Francesco Friedrich at the age of 23, already a two-time world championship medalist. His brakeman, Giannis Banka. Different brakeman this week. Tweets continue to come in. Noel Pekka's pace talks about her pleasure of winning the World Cup earlier today. But here is Germany, Friedrich. Yeah, this is the rising star of the German program, but they got six more hanging out back there in Birch's Garden. Start, second best start as we get the World Championships. He had the best starts of the World Championships, and guess what? He won them. And not a huge athlete compared to so many of the Germans we've seen over the years. No, he's only about 195 pounds, but they say he can run like a deer. And he's got the eye and coordination. Look at his head. He got that same drift everybody else has got. They're trying to get over into that curve, Wasatch, as early as they can. In the bottom part of the track, that's where it sets you up. Very tight now, a hundredth of a second. This part key. Cunningham was good. Not so for the German. Not nah, same speed as Cunningham. Exact. It's going to be close. Nine hundredths. So it is. Uh, yeah, there's that reaction from Erlangen. Yeah, Volmeister. But, you know, it is kind of against the trend, John, that we've seen the two fastest times now later at the six and seven start positions on this snowy day. And, you know, the other two guys, Mel Bardis and Zupkoff, very surprised they weren't better. So this is not like a chalk that we saw in the women's bobsled where we picked out it was going to be in one, two, three at the end of the first tee. Here he is. He's just trying to get over on this left side, his right, onto the curve early. Krista, oh, why did you? Do that. Now look at his eyes above the cowling. A little airborne on the exit of the 14. Clean the runners. And just another day at the office for a German bobsledder. Everyone is loving what they see out of this first time team together. Chris Spring and Jesse Lumsden paired together for Canada. Had a bronze medal at the World Cup opener last week. Also did well in four men. Four years ago, Chris Spring was sliding for Australia. Traded in his passport. Got his Canadian passport recently. Had a good season last year. Big accident in 2011 in Altenburg. Set him back for a while, but he's so passionate about the sport. And you know, the more times he comes down the track, Everybody starts to agree. He's got talent. Lumsden, well, he won that World Push Championship going away. Former Canadian Football League player coming from a long line of great football players. Hey, they're really in the hunt here. They've fallen back a bit on that last split. That's a still could be top five. That little skid up there into the Wasatch curve that cost him a lot of time. Six back. And after all of that big buildup. Second. Second best start. Second best start, six down. So that tells driving error. No, not a driving error. Okay. Driving error. That type of disparity, because before that, you had the, you know, the third best start by Friedrich. He was in second. So look at here. Look at this. The, 
this is he gets over to the right side of the screen this is his mistake everybody else is trying to get in the left side he's in the right sky now watch this he has to go up high he's got a higher line than anybody he's got to steer off there lost a lot of pressure and speed when you start to steer like that at a high pressure point you cut down on your speed that that shot where you come down that straightaway is so important after Olympic medals and world championship medals as a brakeman, Biot Hefty several years ago took a year off, learned how to drive, and became one of just a few pilots in the history of this sport to win his World Cup debut. Hefty has been solid ever since, one of the fastest start teams from Switzerland. The only question that remains, you know, when you when you make that shift to the driver seat so late in your career, how much do you have left in you? Now 35 years old, competing today with Alex Bauman. He's a monster. He wins all these races on these short tracks. Winterberg, Innsbruck, Koenigsee, Calgary, 486. That ties for the fastest start time that the Americans had a few moments ago. Ooh, well, quick out of there. Came down the right side. That should open up to two or three. I'm sure his accelerator speed into the sled is why he's, well, he's only got 100 there, but now to see if he's got the driving ability, which he does. Doesn't like the four-man, like his two-man competitor. Now he's there, he's trying to get over that right side, which he did compared to Chris Spring, who couldn't do it, the Canadian. Oh, he lost some time. Falling behind the American and perhaps behind Ooh, the German here. Big, big speed, no doesn't, no speed at all. He's gonna fall five, six places. He was 82.4 uh, miles per hour and in fourth place. Hey, that, that exit or that long straightaway, Albert Sally, he took a real hard hit on the bunk and that threw him sideways into the Wasatch curve. He went from minus two to plus numbers right after that. What did he cost himself? Could he have been in second, maybe even the lead, right? Yeah, he was the leader right here. Now watch him come across. He's trying to get over here on the left side of our screen to get on the takeout early. Now look, he's got a drift going. Now watch how hard he hits, bang! And that pushes him down into the middle of the curve. Now this is really, this is another huge, this is worth at least a tenth, sixth best speed we've seen so far. Boy, graveyard of time. Right there, it just, the graveyard just put a little stake in the ground for Biat. Next Canadian sled is an Olympic bronze medalist in the four-man competition, Lyndon Rush, now a 33-year-old veteran, originally from Saskatchewan. Lascelles King Brown, his brake man, new to this sled this year. Look how quickly they get out. The Canadian coaches said, as soon as that light's green, you go. They're just thinking of the snow effect. You can see the snow on the track. Eighth place finish last week in Calgary certainly be construed as a bit of a disappointment. Nice here in the top group. Last year he was in second place ahead of the first heat. He had an unbelievable run going to the second heat. He crashed in curve 13 and ended up really hurting his World Cup points. But everybody said he would have beat Holcomb that day who won the race. Perfect line. One of the best lines we've seen in Albert Sally, the Wasatch. Now can he hold it on the bottom? These are great lines. He's 700s to 700s. The speed, he's going to need 134 and a half. 134.7. He could be two or three hundreds behind here. Canadians Eleven. on the finish in third place. Right now it is USA, Germany, and Canada. One, two, three in the standings. But the Latvians just behind in fourth place, setting up for a very close race so far. Another American team about to come down. That speed's on the exit going into the graveyard. Might be that uphill section's accumulating a little slow, because I thought with a 134.7, he'd be able to eat into that 700s deficiency. In fact, he lost four more hundreds here. And, so, and six best start time, John, for them. Is that a surprise to you? No, no, no. With, with Las Ellis? No, I, no, I think that's about right. You know, top six, if he got eighth or ninth, I would say it's not the norm. Last week, Stephen Holcomb, the USA pilot captured both the two-man and four-man competitions. He's, of course, the defending Olympic champion in four-man. He's chasing down an American teammate right now, Nick Cunningham, the driver, currently in first place. This is Holcomb with his brake man, Chris Fote. He had Steve Langton on the brakes last week. Look at the technique, Fote. His, his head's locked right into the shoulders. Great start time, speed, gonna be so important. Holcomb in. I guess I better not jinx him. Talk about his driving abilities. 86.3 speed. It's 
53 miles an hour. Still just 100th up, though, on their teammates, Cunningham and Robinson. Going five sleds back of Cunningham. Opening it up to 600. Now a slight tap, not a redirect. Yeah, he didn't get chased off that take on like some of the other pilots. The bottom part of the track, it's up to nine. He's opening it up. See what he can do here in the graveyard. Speed, 135, the best speed. He's going to be double digits. Holcomb won the first three World Cup no, two-man races last year. He could be on his way to doing the same thing this year. He's been a stellar pilot in North America, especially here in his hometown. Literally, Park City is where Holcomb grew up. Well, it's definitely, he had the best speed of anybody, the only person to crack 135 kilometers, but he definitely didn't have the acceleration going through the finish curve, which, so watch the brakeman here. Boy, he looks like he took a lot of extra steps. Got in, get down, and I don't know. I think they're gonna look at that on tape, and they'll say maybe he took one too many steps. Nonetheless, a first place run as the United States holds down the top two spots here. He's, is he, did he win all four heats last week? I think he was second in one of the heats. He was second to Chris Spring, I believe, in the uh, second run yeah. of the four man. So now another American sled looking to maybe make it a 1-2-3 USA sweep. Not as likely from the team that finished ninth last week, but Corey Butner has certainly had some flashes of brilliance in his first few years in the World Cup. In fact, last year he was third in the overall World Cup standings with a very consistent season. Behind him today, Chuck Berkeley, tallest member of the USA team at 6'5", 228. Berkeley. Good athletes, but a couple of California dudes. 94, his speed, 86.3 kilometers is what his teammate had. Holcomb, that start speed, so important on your left, 85.6. That's a half a kilometer down. Doesn't sound like much, but we're dealing with hundreds of seconds. It's a lot. So now it becomes a question of driving and sled and runner set up. 1500s at the last split. 1900s now is keeping it close. He stays within a quarter of a second. He's in the hunt for the medals. Butner, perfect lines, especially in Albert Sally. Losing time back, reflective of the start time. And he's right there, 134.5, not bad. 83.6 miles an hour to the finish in eighth, eighth place, but a very close eighth place. In fact, right now, a tenth of a second separates third place and eighth place, setting up what could be a great run for the medals in the second heat. I can tell you now that uh, he might even be better in the second one because that he might be dealing with the snow. Was a push. Butner and Berkeley here at the start. Start Berkeley. Tall, six foot three, in down cat like movements. He's a big man. Can we see Berkeley behind him? Barely. That's where all the air gets dirty in there as it exits the sled right over the brakeman's shoulders, out the back like exhaust. Go warm up, fellas. So far, both women and men, not a stellar day for Germany. Doing okay here in the men's competition with Friedrich currently in third place. But now we have two German veterans and very decorated pilots getting set to crack the top 10. This is Max Arndt competing today with Marco Huppenbacher. He's only six foot six, 239, 40 pounds, and runs like a deer. 1700 not, down. Not a great start. Let's watch the speed, 86.3. He gets into high 85. That tells you their velocity entering the sled was great. But John, 502. 85.8, I'm telling you, that's deficiency at the start. They at least had good velocity getting in the sled. That's the technique the Germans have perfected forever. You can run too far and have the best start time, but not the best speed at the first we time. We saw that a lot at the last Olympics. Yeah. 30 hundreds with that start time deficiency. 11th best start. Expect that. 3,400s now. He could bring back a little bit. He needs Perfect to line. if he wants to be. Second guy in 135 kilometers. Across the finish line, 3,500s, but 10th place. Again, it's very, very tight. Don't let that 10 deceive you. He is about 1,500s out of fifth place. If there's anybody going to challenge Holcomb in the four-man, Bob, it's this dude right here. 
But the 11th best start, we know their starts are down a bit, John, but the slowest of the 11 that have gone yet, that's his, you know, that's what he does. He's not a great start, but boy, when he gets those three big horses behind him in the four man, you don't see that deficiency. Just look at the speed though, right there in the bottom. That's why he is definitely a formidable opponent for Holcomb tomorrow in the four man Bob, because he can drive. And he is the present world champion of the sport. Arndt and Friedrich, two Germans in the top 10, now two young pilots at 26 and 25 years old, respectively. Now the grand master of the active German pilots, Thomas Florschutz, with the grander master of push athletes, Kevin Kuska. The last Olympics, Florschutz won silver. Kuska took gold behind the legendary Andre Langa. He took also a silver medal in the format. He goes along with his two gold medals in 2006 as a brakeman. He also won a gold medal in the 2002 Olympics. He's on the verge of becoming the greatest the Olympic bobsledder the, ever. The Bogdan Musial of the 21st century. Musial's got so many medals from his Olympic time for the DDR East Germany that he's a chiropractor every day because there's a problem with his neck. And, and carrying the medals around. A lot of steering there. Forschitz, he's always played in the shadow of every other German pilot. You expect a breakout here, and then all of a sudden tears up his Achilles tendon late in the 2000, early in the 2012 season. Comes back and gets second at the Olympic test last year in four man Bob. And he was very happy to get second. It's 12th place here, and, and I said it last week, John, with the Germans sitting two of the three sleds right now in 10th and 12th place. You gotta wonder if Manuela Makata is sitting back at home with a little bit of a smirk, maybe seeing an opening back onto this team. I, I'll guarantee you the three of them have to go back in the German championships at Christmas to New Year's in Birch's Garden. They will have a little competition. And you know, what if Mahata could come up, but Mahata is like art. Mahata can't start the sled either. Floor shoots is a better starter. Boy, he got real high in that curve. Look at the back end come up there too. This was a terrible drive by Thomas Floor shoots, but again, he's sleeping. He's waiting around to February. Second to the Olympic test last year in four man. He's just buying time. The Italians up next, coached by Olympic gold medalist Antonio Tartaglia. This is veteran pilot Simona Bertazzo. Haven't heard much from this brake man, William Fulani. They, they finished tied for 13th with the Canadian Crips last week in Calgary. Technique. The break but it looks like his head's wavering a little bit. A little too much and back and, right. and forth and not enough front. Now again, start speed. Holcomb at 86.3. The Germans just had 85.8 efficient time. See the type of velocity they had. 85.5. Not bad. But you know, that's again, you could really help yourself with the ability to get in that sled with perfect steps and accelerate the end of the sled gives you that velocity. Two biggest reasons, John, why this nation wants the best in the world has fallen on hard times. What are the two biggest reasons in your mind? Well, the Italian government's had 56 governments since 1945. That'll help the stability of all programs. All programs, and it's some feces, supports all the amateur sport programs, and the programs have been cut. You know, the Carbonari, which Antonio Cartaglia on the left is in the Carbonari, and they have a military sport program for the police. And I think both these athletes in the sled are, but uh, they just, they don't really have anybody coming up. And this is from a, a really rich country in the sport of bobsledding. Great Going tradition. back to the days, Eugenio Monti. Gunter Huber with so Olympic gold. And Bertazzo, this pilot right here with two World Cup victories, one in his home track in Italy and one in Lake Placid. They always like to keep your head locked on your shoulders. Look at the movement by the brakeman. His head's every place, side to side. This sport is all about going straight ahead, every part of it. Any side to side with the runners, any side to side with your body, even riding in the sled can alter the forward motion of the sled, and you're dealing with hundreds of seconds. One Canadian pilot, Chris Spring, was born in Australia and now drives for Canada. This pilot, Justin Cripps, was born in the United States. 26-year-old paired today with Brian Barnett 
of Edmonton. Dan Barnett, the track and field athlete from Canada, doing the sport, decent start. Watch Barnett's, you know, news. Let's see the start speed. 80, he should have 85, 9 or something with that start speed. 85, 9 is what it is. That's an unbelievable track and field athlete in the back of this line for Canada. I think by the end of the year, they're going to start seeing him figure out a little bit more velocity tricks into the sled. Cripps is a great athlete himself. Hey, this is a good run going until that skid there, just 1,500s back at the last split. 88, 83.8 miles an hour. Cripps' parents watching in Hawaii, I'm sure. If they can't get the feed, they're probably sending us emails complaining about it. Great bottom part of this track, 83.3. Not speed, though. He falls back 900s on that last split, but a top 10, that's really the best run we've seen in the last five or six sleds. Sometimes, though, when you go late in the heat like this, the track's cut up. This track's notorious on perfect weather conditions for the first sled having such a distinctive advantage. And here he's running back 13-14. It's snowing. But Cripps has a chance to do this same thing again in the second run, and he could move up. Runner tips. Do we see shoulders back there? Yeah. You see this? You see the shoulders back there, the brakeman? A lot of air stopping right there. But there's a good take on to the Wasatch Curve, and here, these look like good lines down on the Olympic Curve. Tenth place right now, just 17 hundredths out of third place in the medals. And There's the Olympic is, Curve. It's going to be a very tight second run. They're going to that beard thing. With the well, Red most Sox. of them shaved them at the end of November, but uh, not not Cripps. Not Jesse Lumsden. There's yeah, a bunch of them. That's right, Chris Spring. Here's uh, the debut this season for the Koreans, Young Young Wan and Young Woo So. They're making the push not for Soshi, but for 2018. Well, you know how good the Koreans are in golf? These Koreans have been really paying a lot of attention to detail this sport. Brand Eurotech slide, I think it's a brand new Eurotech slide. The wandering Welshman, Malcolm Lloyd, coaching the Koreans this year. Not a bad start. start. It's not bad at all. You, the Koreans are very, very meticulous in sport. And we've watched these guys for the last two or three years. When we saw them show up a few years ago, they weren't very big. They looked like judo or karate athletes. Now they've all been in the gym. They're all getting bigger. And they pay attention to detail. And I see a successful program building here as we head into the Pyeongchang Korea Olympics four years from now. Not bad. They've been doing great at the American, the North America's Cup. They'll be hard pressed to stay still off last place, but still. Speed. The start time as we see them cross in 15th place out of 15. John, check this out. A, a faster start than two of the three German sleds, a faster start than the Russian veteran Zubkov. You, you look for the little things that you can be oh, encouraged yeah, no, by. Very this. positive. He didn't have a good downtime, and uh, you know, he's probably got three, four years driving, you know, but next time you see these guys a year from now, they're gonna look big, because they're in the weight room. They're pay attention to detail. Look at the technique. Watch the brakeman getting get down. Paui looks like he ran it one step too far. Shoulders, can we see the breaking shoulders back there? Yeah, you can. He's got to learn how to ride a little bit better. The air, he makes a mistake there. So those are the details, I'll tell you. Look what they've done in golf, with the women's golf. Look what they've done on the men's tour. They're just so meticulous the way they approach sport. I think they're gonna apply the same instincts to bobsled. Back at the turn of the century, France had a huge flash of success in the sport of bobsled. Thanks to pilot Bruno Manjean, they won a world championship and an Olympic bronze medal. Haven't had much to show for since. Eric Allard with one World Cup medal as well, now coaching the Swiss. Let's see what we hear from Loïc Coster and Romain Heinrich. The lone France entrant. First time we've seen them this year. They've got, last year they had some unbelievable strict requirements for them to qualify to get to the World Championships. But it was great to see a race return to France for yeah, the first time Leplan in the France, the last two years we've been there. Track's great. That track is long and fast like this one. This one's short and fast. That Leplan track, it's great to see them using it the last two years. These are great lines. Oh, Jinxon, this is, this is pretty good. 
Will he finish ahead of one of the German sleds? That would be huge. Uh, a double tap there probably won't happen, but 83.4 miles an hour, pretty good. That's splits. pretty good. He is ahead. He beat of Chris Spring. He beat Bertazzo Florschutz. What a lineup. That's his greatest heat of his young World Cup career right there. And this with the snow continuing to fall. Wow. Wow. So, John, really the question is, as we see a little bit more of this run, if you look at the rest of the start list, who else could potentially bump ahead of the Germans, move into the top 12? Bauman? Van Cocker? Yeah, look at this, look at this line. Is that quiet? That's, look at this night, comes out a little early here. That causes the skid. Hey. Very good. Two Dutch sleds in the field once again this week. Last week's 17th place went to pilot Ivo de Bru and Arno Klassen, the brakeman. And later on, we'll see Edwin van Cocker. Look at the size of the brakeman. The Dutch, the tallest people on the planet. They've got some tall people on their bobsled team. You know, though, John, I was talking with Sebrin Jansma a couple of days ago, we'll see him in a, a little later on in this race, and he said they're actually having trouble with weight, of having enough weight. They're all trying to eat, they're all trying to lift, but they're having to put more weight in the sled, not enough on their bodies. I think they're just using that as a ploy to get more per diem. <laughs> they look pretty big now. Yeah, no, they're tall I mean, guys. Tall guys and big, they're not skinny. They're big men. Yeah, I'm just telling you what Zebra told me. Yeah, it's a ploy to get more money. I think they've got a lot of weight in those sleds. Now, the driver here, Evo de Bruyne, is not that big of a guy. His teammate, Edward Van Cocker, is 6'5", 220. Three hundredths ahead of the Koreans in 16th place out of 17. Keep in mind, we have a 25 sled field today. That's larger than last week. Only the top 20 will qualify for the second run and an opportunity to get some World Cup points. 14th best start was his nemesis. Klassen, the brakeman. Good technique. Look at that head. Pretty in between the shoulders, in and down quickly. And he takes that big six foot four frame and locks himself in. Good aerodynamic profile, but boy, when you skid like that going uphill, Evo, he knows what he did wrong. John, back in 2009, you and I were in this very room calling the World Cup uh, right before the World Championships, Lake Placid. And we saw this pilot on a similar day, a snowy day, Nikolai Estrada of Romania, end up in fourth place after the first run. That was a watershed moment for him. Yeah, top 10 finish at the World Championships in Koenigsegg in 2011. I think the they got that little lend lease program going on with the Germans. The Germans every once in a while go to the hotel and give them a set of runners when they want to see them improve. The Germans do a great job with assisting other countries. Florin, that can't beat them. Florin Krejcian, the longtime brakeman. But you, you and I were talking the other day. You had nothing but praise for the drive and desire of this Romanian program. I always say it. No one does more with less on tour than the Romanian athletes. Great pride. Last time they medaled, as I always bring this up, 69 World Championships, Pantaro and Lake Placid. Romanians medaled, four-man bobsled. They were a force to be reckoned with back in the 30s and 40s. They had a track up in the mountains called Chiani. And they say it's still there. The frame of it's still there. And once in a while, they build it. It's a natural track. They only build like a 1,000 meters of it. But boy, if you can take passion and this country here, these guys, this, they just come out every year and just do it. And they do it pretty well when you consider they're only three hundredths behind the German Olympic silver medalist, Tomas Florschutz, with Kevin Kuska. Yeah, but the Germans, they're still sleeping. I still have to call it what it is, and Florschutz yeah. in 12th place looks surprising Watch on this the screen slip in here. front of me. Brakeman slips here. Watch this. See that? Yeah. Ooh, oh, that that's, was a good catch. That's... Ooh, look at the you know the coach. You can see his hands go up in the air. Could oh have been God. better for the Romanians. Could have been worse. So it's all about running on ice. And as we go back to the top with our next slide from Switzerland, if Edwin can help us out, Edwin Vermeulen, our, our crack cameraman at the top, if we can get a look at these shoes on the part of the pilots. And uh, you can tell us.
just what, what goes on underneath these Adidas shoes. There's, there, there's 375 16th of an inch spikes, and this is, gives you the ability to run across the ice. And Bauman, boy, is he coming off a bad weekend in Calgary, crashed in the four-man. He had a lot of crashes in 2012-13 season in November up in Whistler, in Lake Placid. He had a tough season. They took him off the tour for the second half of the year. Great to see him back. He's six foot three. Had some good results going into Vancouver in four-man bobsled. And just seems like the sled gets a little ahead of him sometimes. And they're on the wrong side of the entrance to Wasatch. As I was saying earlier, Joe. Ooh, it's just late. He's late here. Watch out. Ooh. A lot of head snap. That's the most hellacious ride of the first team, and he continues it. He's just, the slide just gets away from him. There's just no depth on the Swiss program. Unbelievable. A nation Perplexing. that generally has at least two, if not three, contending pilots. They have hefty and pray for rain. Yeah, you know, there's Roger Federer gets a few ratings in uh, Switzerland, but boy, the Swiss love their bobsled. One of the top winter sports for ratings. They get the skiing going on, too, over there. Watch this. He has to steer hard. The back end of the sled comes up. Real hard steering. Watch this. He's late here. Now he has to steer again. Wrong side of the curve. Bang. He's going to go in the middle of the skid. He's got to steer real hard there. This, he was just late. The rest of the way down the track, he was, oh, boy, there's almost a crash. Airborne. Wow. Well, Evo, if you can't win, at least give us something to talk about. And that was... He gets my vote for the worst ride of the day. Drive of the day. Third of the Russian sleds now to come, 19th place last week as the Americans hold the top two positions here on their home track. Next up, we've got Nikita. Oh, I'm sorry, we've got one Latvian sled, then the Russians. Yeah, Oscar's Kibermanis. They had a great start time last week in Calgary. Great start time, but the track didn't end at 50 meters. They had another 1,350 meters that he he uh, used all of the track, let me say. Fourth best start time of the competition, 487. Speed, 85.9 start speed, or not start speed, but first speed in the curve three, which is a real good, ooh, ooh that was high. It's a real good barometer to use if you're keeping score, like in a baseball game with a scorebook. That tells you a lot. Late there, it's not a bad time. 30 hundreds if he can hold it. 133 and change, no, 132. So he's gonna drop back ninth or 10, maybe worse. And 14. 14th place for the Latvian and John. But he's young, Kieberman is young. He's a good starter, he's two, young. With two more live heats of action still to come, I'm gonna take a quick little two minute break and leave it to you to call the action. Thanks, Tim. Well, this is a young athlete with tremendous promise. The sled gets away here, goes way up near the roof. That's not the way to do it. And here, airborne runners, a little bit. Look at the head snap. That's a bad exit of the curve. But Kiebermans, boy, they've got a lot of praise about his future in Latvia. Nikita Zakharov, our next competitor from Russia. Here's the shoes, Pierre Luders cleaning off those little spike shoes we talked about. You gotta keep them shoes okay. clean. You saw the Latvian slip or the Romanian slip. Zakharov didn't have that good a weekend. They keep that visor up as long as they can so it doesn't fog up. Look at the brakeman's visor back there. See all that's already fogged up. The driver, he's got that no fog spray or on the lens so he doesn't do it because if he did fog up, might not be a good chance to get to the bottom at a fast time. And of course with that start time, 16th best start time, not very good start speeds. And now the time he can only hope the next clock to keep it within 40 hundreds down. There's 40. Skid, not bad. He'll drop some more into the 50s. Five or so the next clock. And 
Now he wants to hold it. 5400s, he could get away with 7500s down here in the bottom. No speed at all. There's no speed left in this track. 7300s. Pierre, what do you think about that, Pierre? Next, you know, all you can say about that 20th place, look at the driver or the brakeman's visor. And Nikita, well, he knows he's probably not going to make the second run. Look at the runner tips. Can't see the brakeman back there. Great aerodynamic profile. He's just coming over to the left side of our screen. He wants to get on that Wasatch on his terms. Doesn't want the curve to dictate to him where he has to get off. Second of Dutch sleds now getting set to go at the top. This is Edmund von Cocker with the silver, not orange sled, or the whitish sled, and repaired with his longtime brakeman, the big Zebrin Jansma. There was a time when they would put down the top three or four starts in the first 50 meters. 6.5 and 6.7. So let's see. Zebrin get in, get down. I'm always busting them about their aerodynamic profiles. They tell me they work on it every week, but it's pretty tough. Oh, look at that mistake on the take on that bump. Speed way down, 85.5. You know they had the 13th best speed. How can you, how can you figure that? Unless they're on the German program, which is, let's just peak in February. Let's not do it now. Boy, this is a guy who got World Cup medal. Look at that mistake. I mean, that's he's. What do you know of the Olympic qualifying for the Netherlands this year? It's always kind of, st kind of tough. Yeah, they think they got to get a couple eighth place finishes. I think our guys in the truck. Might know that better than us, but I think it's top eight. And they had an 18th place. Two eight. times top 10 is what I'm hearing, and he didn't make the cut there. On a one to 10, he didn't score, and you could just give him an F and send him to the, wow. Well, send I mean, him to Lake Placid, but more importantly, they figure to do a lot better in Winterburg, Germany after the new year. Well, if he drives like this, he won't do good in anything. I mean, that's, this is the worst exit of the curve we've seen in the 20-something sleds come down the track. You want to know how to not to do it? There you go. Well, that's as bad as it can be. And there's their check coach. Is that Danilovic? Yeah, Vito. Yeah, former European champion, now coaching the, the Ivo Dutch Danilovic. team. Good man. Czech Republic, speaking of which, they've actually had a long line of pilots with the European champion Danilovic and a former World Cup medalist, Pavel Pushkar, Yuri Jamira, and here's Jan Virba, along with Jakob Havlan. Havlan new, come in, got a headshot this week. Good athletes here, track and field backgrounds. Good look at the hamstrings. Notice Weber did not start off the block. He started up front with his both feet in the ice. A little, than, a than, slow yeah. in getting into Get the sled. In. He got in so quick. And he's new. And look at his shoulders here. We can see him back there. Yeah, you can see a lot of them. So he's going to learn how to, how to drive. I mean, they don't, they don't build these sleds like they would a pair of shoes or something to your feet. I mean, usually you buy these sleds stock and you try and fit yourself in there. And, you know, fitting yourself in there is pretty smart for the aerodynamic needs that the sport presents. Sitting on the bubble right now in 20th place, the Russian sled piloted by Zakharov. He's all set. He won't have to worry. I can't see this guy coming down any better. Speed way off the pace. And Virba and Havlan with a 20th 23rd place out of the 23 that have gone. Yeah, not good. He had some pretty good results last year in Foreman. Altenburg, he was in fourth place here in the first run. Of course, it was a watered down field. Most of the teams were over in St. Moritz practicing for the World Championships. Good lines, comes over to the right, left side of our screen, right side of him, gets on the Wasatch curve where he wants. Those are good lines, but you know, when you have the 23rd best start time and you finish in 23rd place, that's pretty good measure.
Couple of athletes under the employ of Her Majesty, now from Great Britain, John Jackson, 36-year-old pilot, Royal Marines Commando. His brake man out of the Royal Air Force is Stu Benson. Benson's third year in the sport. Jackson, of course, coming off of an awful injury, a ruptured Achilles tendon, not starting at full force, but we saw in the four-man last week, John, he's got a great crew of both two- and four-man push athletes. Yeah, they had the fourth-best start time with the, you know, the driver being wounded like Jocko is. You know, give Jocko credit, man. He had surgery last April, hurt the Achilles training. And he was coming off a good year. So there's the worst start time of the day. Well, when you snap your Achilles, you really don't have the opportunity to get back out and sprint quickly, and here he is. Seven, eight months later, Joe wants to make the Olympics. Jocko was, was fifth in the World Cup standings last year in four-man, 14th in two-man, and a nation that traditionally has better four-man pilots. Sean Olson, the Olympic bronze medalist, Mark Tauta, World Cup medalist. You have to go back to Nash and Dixon to find the, the complete two- and four-man package. I think the British snuck in there and won a bronze medal, I think, at the 24, 28 games. We'll have to look at the research. They medaled before that, but that was a few time, few years ago. Well, world championships and Olympic gold in the 60s. But not today. 24th place for Jackson and Benson. There will be no second run for them. I can't see that Russian getting bumped off that 20th spot. I mean, unless Kupchak pulls a miracle out. Great. Look at the yellow shoes. And really, I mean, he he looks like a man that's not injured in form. And that's a good sign, despite the fact clearly he's not going at 100%. This is a two-person sport. It's a team sport. You can have Usain Bolt on the back. And if he's limping like Jocko is right there, Usain Bolt could have the same result. It's a two-person team sport. Final sled here in run number one the fourth and final event of this long day of sliding. Poland, pilot David Kupczyk, Martian Nuviara, the brakeman. They've been a team for many years. Kupczyk crashed last week in the four-man competition. Been driving since 98. Really thought Poland was about to make a move into the elite part of the sport. Good track and field athletes. They hosted the Congress this year in Poland. My first trip in Poland. People were extremely gracious. Got a chance to meet Lech Walesa. You did. Well, he gave the opening remarks at the Congress. It was great. Solidarity. So, no speed at all which gives him a little chance to crack at the top 20. Again, it's about start time. It's about equipment, which is the sled of the runners and the driver. I think the start time is more important than the driver. Start time and driver are worth about 60%. Kupczyk and Poland looking to be in the top 20. Nope. and skidding their way out of the top 20 without question. 25th place out of the 25, a buck 31 back. You know, as much experience he's got, how much knowledge they have in the sport, very surprised at that, very, as we prepare for an Olympic year. You know, he's always in the 15 to 20s, but maybe time is catching up with David Kupchak. The low part of this track before the uphill section. It's not what you want to do when you're going uphill. They won't get a second run, but we'll see you tomorrow with the four-man, Bob. Well, the American that won both events last week, pilot Steve Holcomb on his home track, takes the lead here midway through the second race of the season. And maybe a bit of a surprise, his teammate Nick Cunningham is right behind him. But John, what did you like from this well, run? The teams that are first and second at the top of the track at the start are first and second at the bottom of the track in the position. That tells you all about the personality of this Park City track. Start time, you got a chance. If you don't have a start time, you know, you won't be celebrating at the hotel tonight. Brian Scheimer, the coach, he loves that.
the standings are not as tight as they are among the top four in the women's competition, but they still are pretty tight, especially if you look at from third place to 10th place, there could be a lot of shuffling as these teams fight to get on the podium. But it's Holcomb's race to lose as you look at the top 10 and all of the top 20 who will compete in the second heat. Stick around, we've got much more to come. Our Canadian viewers will join us live on television in just about six minutes, and we resume with our World Cup worldwide coverage coming up at quarter past the hour. Until then, it's USA sitting in the top two positions here in the World Cup two-man competition. For John Morgan, I'm Tim Singer. Stick around. We will be back in just a few moments. Yeah, that was, I'll, I'll fix that next one.